Hey everyone, uh, my name is Omid Kamangar and uh, in this video I'm going to show you uh, how to install Ruby uh, on a Unix-based system uh, using uh, Ruby install and Ruby. So this, uh, there are other ways to install Ruby and uh, Rails on Unix-based systems, but uh, personally I prefer this one. Uh, I'll create an uh, post uh, tutorials and videos for installing Ruby using uh, RVM and uh, RBN uh, in future but uh, this is my own uh, preferred way to install Ruby and Rails and this is what I do uh, for my own personal usage. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, install uh, a program, a command line utility called uh, Ruby install. So uh, we go to Ruby install page uh, you can just search for Ruby install and uh, it's this one on github uh, I'll uh, post the link in the description below so uh, it's it's pretty straightforward and easy to do um, all we need to do is uh, come down to the installation sections uh, in, uh, installation section and uh, copy these lines of code and uh, run it in our term terminal emulator. So I'll just copy paste them and uh, hit enter. Uh, it asks for my password because it's going to install in some um, some system directories and it needs uh, sudo access. I enter my password and, and now we have uh, successfully installed uh, Ruby install. Uh, next thing that we need to do is um, install another uh, command line utility called Ch Ruby. I'm, I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly, but it's spelled like Ch Ruby. It's again on GitHub, and I'll uh, post the link in the description below. Um, again, come down to the installation installation section and uh, just copy and paste uh, these lines of uh, shell code and uh, uh, same with Ruby install it will go ahead download Ruby and install it this time it didn't ask for a uh, sudo password and now uh, we have successfully installed Ruby there is one more thing to do with Ruby and uh, uh, we need to uh, add uh, the other loading scripts to um, bash rc or uh, z shell rc the the shell files so uh, whenever we open a new terminal window uh Chiruby is uh, loaded and the uh, and it will automatically pick up the ruby version uh, based on the file that we will create later on in this video uh, so if this is uh, if this is confusing just bear with me and um, uh, it will be clear in a second. So uh, I come down to auto switching, uh, copy these two lines of code. And uh, uh, if you are on bash, uh, you need to open bash rc uh, in your home directory. So you need to do uh, like bash rc in, uh, in your home directory. It's a hidden file. It's a, with a dot uh, in the beginning. Uh, if if you are on Z shell like me, uh, you need to open the uh, Z shell RC file. It's located at uh, home in, in your home directory, uh, and again it has a dot in the beginning. So Z shell RC, and all you need to do is paste those two lines that uh, we copied from the web page and save the file. Now we're we're ready to uh, to go and. Uh, configure our system and our directories uh, for uh, to use with Ruby and Ruby install. In order to load uh, Ruby and Ruby install, you need to close uh, your terminal session and open a new session. That's what I've done here. And now, uh, if I type Ruby dash install, uh, it will go ahead and uh, show me the list of available Ruby. Uh, interpreters that I can install. There's Ruby, there's JRuby, RBX, Truffle Ruby, and ML, MRuby. Uh, to install a Ruby version, uh, you need to call Ruby install uh, with the interpreter name. Here I will I will go with the, uh, the, the standard Ruby and then the version number. So 2.6.5 is the latest stable 
uh, standard Ruby uh, version here and I'll install that. It takes a while to download and compile Ruby, so I'll pause the recording here and uh, we'll continue when it's done. Okay, uh, the installation is complete and uh, um, off camera, I also installed two more uh, uh, Ruby interpreters on my machine. Uh, if I do etch Ruby now, uh, you can see that I have version 2.5.1 and 2.6.2 .2 also installed. And uh, you see a, an asterisk uh, by Ruby 2.6.5. I'll describe that in a, in, a, in a second. If you want to change to a specific version, you can do uh, to Ruby and then the name uh, and the version number. So for example, if I want to switch to uh, 2.5.1, uh, I can do 2.5.1. And then if I do to Ruby again, you can see that the asterisk is now uh, moved to the 2.5.1. Uh, so that asterisk uh, shows uh, the, the activated Ruby version in this uh, terminal window. It could be like if I if I open a new terminal window now, uh, it will go back to 2.6.5 because that's the default version that I have on my system. So uh, this is one way of uh, changing uh, the active Ruby interpreter on your machine. But uh, if, if you were like me and working on a project uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, this is not practical. Uh, you can't, uh, I mean, uh, it, it is not practical to switch uh, to the Ruby version that you have every time you open a new terminal. So um, there is a better approach. Uh, we can have a, a file in, in a directory and uh, uh, specify the Ruby version for that directory. So Every time we cd into that directory, uh, the Ruby version will be activated automatically for us. So if I uh, if I create a directory here, I call it uh, like test Ruby uh, version, and, and then I uh, cd into that directory. Uh, uh, all I need to do is create a, a file uh, called Ruby dash uh, version and specify the version that I want to use inside this directory. So if I if I have a uh, Ruby or Rails project in this directory and I want to uh, use Ruby version 2.6.2 here, uh, I need to uh, open this file and type in 2.6.2 and uh, save and quit the file. Now, if I go back to my home directory uh, and again, CD into the test Ruby version directory, uh, and do a Ruby. Uh, you can see that Ruby version 2.6.2 is activated here because there's an asterisk uh, beside the name. If I cd back to my home directory and do a Ruby again, this time 2.6.5 is activated. So uh, whenever I cd into any directory and uh, uh, Ruby uh, finds out that uh, I have a file with with the name. Uh, dot ruby dash version in that directory and if it contains a uh, a ruby version number that is installed on my system it will automatically switch to that ruby version so this is for project specific uh, ruby versions uh, if you want a system wide uh, uh, if you if you want to specify a ruby version uh, for your whole uh, system uh, a system wide uh, ruby in, uh, ruby version uh, it's the same thing, uh, almost the same thing. Uh, you need to create a file named ruby-version uh, with a dot uh, in the beginning in your home directory. So if I switch to my home directory and I uh, open that file, uh, I have a ruby-version here. You can see that 2.6.5 is activated, uh, is written here. And that's why if, uh, that's why and that's why when I switched into the test Ruby version, uh, if I if I change Ruby here, uh, if I type in Ruby here, you can see that it's 2.6.2. And if I cd back uh, into my home directory and do H Ruby again, you can see it's 2.6.5. Uh, it's because the contents of the Ruby file, uh, of the Ruby version file in my home directory is 2.6.5. So this is a very convenient way of managing your Ruby installation. Uh, you can have many uh, different Ruby interpreters and different versions on your system and 
uh, switch between those versions automatically using the Ruby version uh, Ruby version file. And of course with the dot uh, in the beginning. So we have Ruby installed uh, on my uh, machine. This is a Linux uh, distro. Uh, the, the procedure is the same for uh, all Linux distros and also for Mac OS. Uh, if you are on our Windows, uh, I haven't tried this, but this will not work, um, I guess, because it needs Bash or Z Shell, uh, which is not available uh, on Windows. I haven't used Windows for ages. Uh, there will be, uh, I'll create a separate video uh, for installing Ruby on a uh, Windows machine in future. You can check out the channel uh, uh, to see when that video is published. I hope this is useful for you and uh, now you can install different uh, Ruby versions and uh, manage them easily on your Unix-based systems. I think that's it for today and um, see you in the next one.